So, I put up a community uh, post last week just basically telling you guys that I, um, I just haven't been feeling like vlogging or making videos. It's not burnout at all. I just, I, a part of it, and I wrote about this in my newsletter, was I just, I got into yet another one of those like bottleneck situations. My stool is slowly sinking. Hang on. Oh, but here's an opportunity for me to show you guys my very appropriate Halloween shirt. I hope you can see it in all its glory. It is a very good shirt. <laughs> Happy Halloween, by the way. I'm planning on getting this up on Monday, so we'll see. Anyway, so um, what the heck was I talking about? This is gonna be a chaotic video, I can tell. Oh, I just, I had kind of a bottleneck situation where a bunch of deadlines came up, as they tend to do sometimes, and um, vlogging and just, I, I wasn't, it wasn't even a matter of time. I just, like not having time to do it, I just wasn't in the mood to film as I talked and talk about my writing. I was just like, I need to get my head down and write this stuff. But since it has been a while, I do want to give you guys some fun updates. So I had been working on this huge ghostwriting project since June. Um, it was the historical. I had talked about this before. It was an absolute, it was so fascinating to work on and I'm so happy I worked on it. This is with a client I've worked with multiple times in the past. It was just such a beautiful concept for a story and it really meant a lot to the client. She had done so much research. I did a lot of research. I learned a lot while I was writing it. Um, it was just, it was a beast, you know? It, the historical novels tend to be a beast. My, my hats off to all you historical authors out there who write these regularly because whew, that was a lot. <laughs> so I did turn that in and I have one ghostwriting client right now. We are in the outlining stage. This is book three in a series that I'm working, I've been working with this client for a while too. Uh, so it's a world and characters that I'm familiar with and that is all I have on the books for ghostwriting for the foreseeable future. And I'm very glad about that because I've told you guys I love ghostwriting and it's true, but I'm just constantly fighting this like frustration that I always put those drafts before my own drafts. And while I know the vast majority of authors have jobs that take up the majority of their life because we all have to pay our bills and our books don't pay our bills, um, writing a draft specifically, not the brainstorming, not the outlining, not the editing, writing a draft is a very specific mental and emotional energy for me. And if I'm working on clients drafts, I just really struggle to work on my own drafts. And I wanna have more time for my own books because, wow, this is gonna be a chaotic vlog. My, my mind's all over the place. I'm finishing up the revisions on Sandstorm. That is one of the questions you guys asked me, so I'm gonna save information on that for later. But that horror idea I developed over the summer, I am uh, really itching to get started on it. And I wrote about this in my newsletter last week, but I had this idea for a middle grade novel that takes it allows me to recycle my absolute favorite elements from dragon balloon if you guys remember that saga and nil versus the pocket universe which in itself was recycling ideas from the coney island book that i wrote and rewrote and rewrote over the course of like seven years um so the dragon balloon element is like the main character's family situation not her as a character and i'm not using that main character but like her family had been through a specific tragedy that had these ripple reaper like kind of consequences that affected all of the family members in different ways and i really loved that and i'm that's in this concept and then for nil it's the anti-hero like i really wanted to write a kind of a artemis fowl you know middle grade protagonist a girl who's just like thinks she wants to be evil and thinks she wants to um, I don't want to go too much into detail because it's still a developmental thing, but this is a fantasy novel and she thinks she wants to conquer a particular world. We'll leave it at that for now. But I was just so excited to have those ideas come together and I've been playing with it and I'm just like, man, I want to write my own books. So anyway, like I said, chaotic vlog. Uh, the other update is that three weeks ago, this opportunity kind of like fell into my lap. And I'm gonna share as much of it as I can with you. Basically, it's that a book packager, and let me pause here for those of you who don't know what a book packager is. A book packager 
is a company that has teams of editors who come up with ideas for books, write the pitches, um, create like summaries, find authors to like lend their voice to the story, work with those authors on developing a proposal with sample chapters and things like that, and then they go on submission to publishers like Penguin Random House and etc etc and um, and try to sell those books and they are very successful. A lot of books that you have read may have started with book packagers and for me I really love them because this particular book packager they knew me because I had auditioned for a lot of projects for them in the past. You guys know I've done a lot of IP work. Sometimes that is directly through a publisher but sometimes it's with a book packager and I just my very first ever series I Heart Band, was an IP project and it was not through a book packager it was at Penguin but just like having that extra like that editorial help in developing and writing the draft when I was so new and so green it was I don't know it, it felt like a nice leg up for me into the industry and gave me more confidence to write my own books and I don't know, I, I really love the idea in particular of working with authors who are struggling, maybe they're on the query go around trying to find an agent, maybe they just haven't been able to sell a project yet and it's, it's just the industry and it's not them and it's not their writing and they're great writers and working with a book packager can be a great way to get your first book deal and to get your, your book out there. So rambling, chaotic, uh, basically what happened is the director of this particular book packager who they keep a low profile online and they've asked me not to like give any specifics about them on my videos um which is fine i don't think i really need to uh and they called and they basically said for various reasons they are looking to expand their developmental editor team for one year and um they were wondering if i wanted to come on and be a developmental editor and I, I have long thought that, I won't say this is my dream job because being an author is my dream job, but let me tell you a little bit about what this job entails, okay? This job means I get to come up with ideas for books, write pitches, write, I mean, maybe outlines, but like kind of synopses, I would say, not like the super detailed outlines, and, um, and then find authors to work with and develop them into proposals and then put them on submission to try to sell them. And then the author writes the draft and I don't write any drafts. <laughs> this is like, I, I, I don't know. I, I've, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you probably know my stool is sinking again. I love coming up with ideas. I love writing pitches. I mean, elevator pitches, oh my gosh. I, I don't know why, I just, that's like a blast to me. And um, I really love writing outlines. <laughs> and I love the idea of not having to write the drafts myself. Plus this gives me an opportunity to like, Lots of times I have ideas for books where I'm like, I don't, I would never write this, not even because I don't want to, but because I don't feel like I am the right person to tell this story. So it, it, it's exciting to me that maybe I can come up with, you know, ideas like that and then find the people who are the right people to tell those stories and see them come to life anyway. Can you tell I'm excited? I'm very excited about this. And another reason I'm excited about this job is that um, it's going to allow me to kind of like, dial back on the ghostwriting a little bit. So the vast majority of the work that I do over the next year is not going to be writing drafts for other people. It's just going to be the pitches and developing the outlines and the synopses. And that will give me more time to write my books. <laughs> that was super long winded. What an intro. Let's see. We're at like almost 12 minutes in and I haven't even answered a question yet. So it's going to be a good day. Also, before I jump into the first question, I will say there are like 30 questions here and I can tell by looking at several of them that I am going to ramble for a long time. And I don't think any of us needs like a two hour long video of me just talking. So I'm probably gonna end up splitting this into multiple Q&A vlogs, just FYI. But if you ask, ask me a question on my community tab and I hearted it, I will answer it at some point in some video. It just might not be this video. Anyway, all right, so let's get started with the first one. Do you have a good method of revising for prose line edits? I have an issue, I'm getting contradictory feedback and critique and I have no idea who to listen to. Why is this happening? Why does my stool not work? Okay, so here's the thing. When I first started out, when I would get line edits and copy edits, I would, accept pretty much all of their suggestions 
because some of it was a lack of confidence in myself, but mostly it was just because they're professionals and I figured they knew better. Obviously, if they... Like, I remember one that stands out in my mind that I steaded, which means I rejected, um, was I met, it was a scene at a school dance and there was a disco ball and the copy editor had suggested changing it to mirror ball because that was more common. And I was like, I don't think anybody calls it a mirror ball. So, you know, things like that. Um, I would say now, if you're getting contradictory feedback on your prose, that that is a struggle and i feel you and i actually had a ghostwriting client go through this when the first book we wrote together came out um and this client fell into the trap that a lot of debut kind of authors fall into of you just read all the reviews all the reviews goodreads amazon wherever and take every single thing they say to heart um, and what I told her was, if you start to see the same one piece of criticism about, say, the voice or the character arc or whatever, if you see it in like 50% of the reviews you read, that it, it might be time to pay attention to that and to address that as an issue. Otherwise, and this is, I'm, this is not to disrespect people who write reviews, but I get to decide the tone and style and voice of my books and not everybody is going to like that and that is 100% okay with me. I feel like if you get too lost in listening to uh, feedback, especially if the feedback is contradictory, you might lose sight of your vision of what you actually want the story to sound like. And so I think for you, when if you're talking, you said prose, and if you're talking about voice specifically and you're getting contradictory feedback, you need to gut check it and, and ask yourself, what do I want this story to sound like? And you also need to accept the fact that there is no universally beloved book in the entire world. <laughs> you will always find haters for any book out there, for the style of it, for the characters, for whatever, as much as, you know, hundreds or thousands or millions of other people might love it. You have to be okay with that. And the way I am okay with that is I know that I stuck to what my you know, I wanted the book to feel like. You know, some of the most negative reviews any of my books have ever had were on Spell and Spindle. Um, and it was specifically about how it's depressing, it's slow, it's, you know, people used all kinds of words to describe it. And it does not bother me in the least because that book is exactly the tone and the style that I wanted. And it, it's okay to me that not everybody loves that. So yeah, I think you really just need to you said, I have no idea who to listen to. You need to listen to yourself at this point and, and know and get solid on what do I want the feel of this book to be. Next question. Are there any stories that you'd like to write but that are too unmarketable to bother with? This is an interesting question. I, I mean, we all get ideas for stories all the time. Ideas are a dime a dozen, right? Um, for me, a lot of them just don't really stick like i need to let an idea kind of percolate for a while before i decide whether or not this is something i'm like really passionate about and i want to write but you asked specifically if they're too unmarketable you know what i would say is this if you feel like you're looking at the market you're looking at trends and you have this idea and you know it's just not the thing right now um key phrase being right now but it is like in your heart and you just you're dying to write this book only if you're dying to write this book if you're not dying to write this book then shelve it for later because maybe that trend's going to come around again because that's what trends do but if you are just really passionate about telling that story right now see if you can think of a way to put a little twist on it to make it marketable because everything always comes around again like people always go to vampires when we talk about trends because it does have like this kind of ebb and flow cycle but you know, people like to say that vampires are dead, but does that mean you can't find any vampire books or shows right now? Of course you can. They are always, they're always there. That fan base is always there. What you really need to do, what you might need to look, work a little harder at is finding the right twist for yours to make it different and that will make it marketable. You know, like it's vampires, but also this, you know. Next, next question. I'm afraid my answer to this is going to be short. Any ideas for writing short stories or advice for writing short stories and editing them? 
I wish I had something to tell you here. I wish I could write short stories. I have never successfully written a short story. I, to be fair, I don't try very often, but what happens with me is that I um, start with an idea for a short story and it turns into a book idea. I am incapable of keeping it like short story appropriate. So I will tell you this, and I cannot, re I don't know who to credit this to. If anybody knows, please let me know in the comments. One piece of advice I heard about short stories a long time ago, I'm gonna be paraphrasing wildly, is that um, you think of a novel, okay, you're inside a house and there's this whole world outside and that is the story. If you're writing a short story, you're looking at that world through a window. And if you're writing a book, you're opening the door and stepping out into it. That makes a lot of sense to me. And I really love that analogy. Again, wish I knew who to credit it to. And I think, um, and it makes me want to write short stories even more because I think I understand when I think of it that way, what that means, but it is not <laughs> something I have been successful at. So I'm afraid I don't have any more helpful advice than that. Next question was, how is your sandstorm editing going lately? So I've got my laptop right here and I will pull it up and tell you. I will link to the shorts up above, but uh, I had been doing this green, red, yellow system uh, with the labels and Scrivener to show when my chapters were, like what state of revision they were in. And once they turn green, I check them so that they appear in the word count. So the total, the book was like around 92,000 words. And right now I have edited 27,000 words. So, you know, I'm nearly a third of the way through editing it. Um, a lot of the chapters to come though are the ones that need some of the more intense rewrites. I am definitely frustrated with my slowness on this. I thought three weeks ago, I thought for sure I was gonna have this done by November 1st because I don't think time-wise it's actually gonna take much time. But like I said, all these other projects just kind of bottlenecked and things have been happening and it's gone slow. But I try really hard to edit at least one chapter every day so I see a little bit more progress. And as far as like how I feel about it, I am deep, deep into the stage of this is completely unsalable. I, I, I'm actually imagining sending this draft once it's revised to my beta readers and the email will just say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for making you read this. It's not, I don't, I don't know what it is. It's not that it's a mess. I've done a good job with the revision and I know the plot makes sense and it's like a coherent story. I just have all the doubt about the idea completely. So that's fun, <laughs> but it, it, it happens. Uh, let's see. Okay. Next question. I can't decide between outlining a book or doing it freestyle and it's stopping me from writing entirely. What would you recommend? I really love this question. Okay, I don't think I've ever actually said this in so many words in any of my videos. So I'm gonna say it now. I truly believe that the vast majority of authors out there are not plotters and they are not pantsers in the strictest sense of the word. Like, take me, I always call myself a plotter. The truth is when I'm writing one of my own books, the outline is gonna be pretty loose at first. It's gonna change a lot as I go, as I work through the story. And I have written books where I've had just like a very, very loose kind of outline, but you wouldn't call it a real outline if that makes sense. And then the pantsers I know, um, they pause frequently in the draft to reassess and write down some ideas for what's coming up next or to go back and kind of like fix things up. I think both, I think all of us kind of do a little bit of outlining, or I shouldn't say outlining, plotting as we go. We just do it at various levels. When I think about plotting, like pure plotting, it's like somebody who works out every single detail of their plot and has it completed before they start writing the draft. I don't know anybody who actually does that. Maybe you're out there somewhere. I don't know you. <laughs> and then also, I don't know anybody who gets an idea for a book, just an idea, and they sit down, chapter one, start typing, and do not stop or do anything else to brainstorm that idea until they hit the end of the draft. I don't know anybody who does that. We're all somewhere in the middle. So I think what you need to do is don't think of it as like, should I plot it or should I draft it? Just think what sounds the most fun to start right now. That might be writing a summary of the beginning of the book. That might be writing chapter one of the book. You can't go wrong. Both are good. 
do that and then reassess. What do I want to do now? Do I want to like summarize what happens next? Do I have an idea about what I want to have happen at the end of the book? Maybe I can write that down. Do I want to just write chapter two? Do that. Take it step by step. Don't, don't think too big picture because most authors are going to be doing a little bit of plotting and reassessing as they write the draft. That's what I think about that. How do you choose what book to start writing next for your personal writing? So like I just said, I have these, these two ideas. Um, the, for the middle grade idea, I did have, and I vlogged about this back earlier this year, I did have an idea for another middle grade. This was a much younger middle grade, like just above chapter book kind of level middle grade um, idea. And I had been revisiting it over the last month and I still think it's a very charming idea and I definitely want to write it, but I I will admit I, I kind of lost my... I don't know. I, I lost a little bit of the passion for it. I don't think it's gone entirely. I just don't think it's the thing I want to write right now. And also in looking at it, I realized there was some stuff about the, the fundamental premise that I wanted to change. I think it's going to be like a little bit of a different project than I thought it was. And I needed to let that sit for a little bit. But then I got the idea for this other middle grade. And what I do when that happens, um, the, the new middle grade started with a what if. Before I knew I was going to be taking stuff from Dragon Balloon and Nil, it was just this very funny what if question I asked myself and I was immediately like, I want that to be a middle grade novel. Do I want that to be my middle grade novel? Do I want to write this or is this just something I want to read? And so I had to let that sit for a little bit in the back of my head, probably about a week. And when it was still kind of like, no, I think I might want to write this. I started a Scribner document and I just started, I started with that what if question. I started brainstorming the main character. Like I said, she's an anti-hero. That is, that was a fundamental part of the what if and um, who she was and why she was the way she was. And then I realized, oh, oh, I've got this stuff from Dragon Balloon. That's where this belongs. And I've got this stuff from Nil. That's where this belongs. Um, and I really just started to see her and her family and it ties in all of the stuff they're going through ties in so well to the fantasy element that it it just started forming in my head and i think i think what happens usually for me with ideas is when i get to the point where i am like mentally writing scenes in my head like i'm mentally writing dialogue i can see characters having these specific moments together and I'm dreaming about it. Uh, that's when it's like, okay, this is a story I want to write. And that is what happened with that middle grade idea. How do you approach writing humor? Any tips, tricks, or writing exercises to share? Oh my gosh, I should have done my research before I read these questions because now I'm going blank. <laughs> All of the books, you know, most of my books are middle grade, right? And when I think humor and specifically writing humor for kids, which I don't know if this is the kind of advice you're looking for, but it's what I know. Um, the most important thing that I keep in mind is one, I don't try too hard to make the kind of jokes I think a kid would make because I am a 42 year old woman. And the fact is like, y'all, we're not kids. And kids can tell when you're like kind of forcing it and trying too hard to sound like them and that does make it a challenge to be a middle grade author so i i honestly i mean obviously my middle grade books don't have like adult jokes in them but i do just try to make jokes or like have write dialogues with specific characters in a way that it's funny to me and I don't know if it's going to be funny to our kid or not, but, and I'm not, again, I'm not really specifically talking so much about the actual joke, but just like the way it's delivered and the way it's written. I don't know if they're going to laugh at it, but it makes me laugh. And so there must be something to it. <laughs> and then I trust like beta readers and editors to tell me like, this just falls completely flat. I think if you're writing humor, you need to make yourself laugh because this, this goes back to the whole thing. I'm looking at the other question, uh, the first question about um, the prose, the voice and things like that. You're never gonna please everybody. You, there is no such thing as a joke that makes every single person on earth laugh, right? So I think, um, I think you need to try to make yourself laugh. 
If you find it funny, then it's genuine at the very least. <laughs> and if it needs to be edited, you can always edit it later and like change it up and revise based on feedback. But yeah, try to make yourself laugh first, I would say. All right, next one. I'm currently querying a YA retelling. I saw on Twitter that an established writer has sold the very same retelling. Should I give up querying this book? No, I do not think that. I, I do think it depends a lot on what the retelling is and how yours is different than the one that you saw that is going to be published. Um, so there are some stories that we just, we never try. And my battery is dying again and I don't have any more. So it's just, this is a great day, you guys. This is gonna be the last question for this video. I'm so sorry I didn't get through more, but again, rest assured, I will be covering all of these questions in future videos. So, okay, the, uh, the retelling. Um, Beauty and the Beast, you know, stories like that. I mean, how many, how many books out there are some sort of retelling or inspired by or whatever? You could say the same for a lot of fairy tales. Now, if yours, if you chose a retelling of something and it just like has not been retold, you can't find a single published retelling out there and this author has one. I, I mean, first of all, I'm sorry. I know that's just a rotten feeling. I would look at that idea, that pitch in the, you know, uh, Publishers Weekly or whatever, is, wherever it is you saw it, and try to identify what is it that they did that makes it not the exact original, if that makes sense. Is it set in the modern day? Uh, is it like a gender bent thing? I mean, what did they do? What did they do to make it different? And is that also the same thing you did? Probably not. In that case, you just want to, when you, I, I mean, keep working on it. And then when you pitch it, um, you, you emphasize what makes yours different. I really don't think there's like a limit to how many retellings of something we can have because when story, stories, again, I don't know why Beauty and the Beast keeps like being the one to come to my mind or like things from Greek mythology, whatever. Um, but like, it's because there's a deep love and hunger for that in, you know, the reading community. People love it and publishers will continue to publish it. So you just have to identify what makes yours different from the original story you're retelling and from this particular book that just got published. It could end up being a good thing for you. It could be the kind of thing where people are, you know, see this new book deal and it does, you know, the, the book does really well and it reignites a passion for that whatever that original story was that they did a retelling of and then you are perfectly placed to be like hey this is a trend now and i've got the next the next big one for you miss literary agent i'm gonna stop right there before my battery dies uh happy halloween i hope you all are having a